This video is on the normal distribution. We'll be looking at finding proportions using the inverse normal to work backwards, but uh, the main point of this video is finding the mean and standard deviation um, given other information about the distribution. So hopefully by the end of this video, that's what you'll be able to do. Um, so here's our example that we're looking at. A university study in uh, studying the increase in heart rate measured in beats per minute of people when taking exercise. Uh, increase in heart rate were normally distributed with a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 9. Uh, classifications were made as follows. Determine the proportion of people classed as very fit. So um, we're looking for uh, people whose increase was less than 22. So it's normally distributed. And so the first thing we do is write a model down. X is modeled by normal distribution, mean 40, and standard deviation of 9. So 9 squared because you put the variance there. Next thing to do is to sketch it. Uh, so our mean is 40, and we are interested in uh, people who are very fit, so less than 22. So 22 there, and this is what we're interested in, what proportion of people lie there. Now, uh, interestingly, given these numbers, um, it looks like it's exactly two standard deviations below here. Um, which would mean we've got 95% uh, of the data there, so this is going to be 2.5% or thereabouts. But we're going to use the calculator to work it out, and we'll see what we get. So we're solving the problem, um, the probability that x is less than 22, or less than, or yeah, less than 22, not necessarily equal, um, and we'll see what we get. So I use the calculator, I've got interactive um, distribution, looking for a continuous distribution and we want norm CDF, the cumulative distribution function. So our lower bound is negative infinity. So um, we'll put in infinity there, that's the sign for infinity. Um, and our upper bound is 22. Uh, now, our standard deviation is nine and our mean is 40. So there we go. Um, it's not quite the 2.5% that um, we would get, but those are approximate values. That's 68, 95, 99.7. Um, so we're getting 0 0.02275 or 2.275%. 2 OK, now, next question is, Alex believes, or would like to believe, she's in the top 10% of fit. What heart rate increase would she need to be in the top 10%? So again, if we draw out our normal distribution, which had a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 9. In order to be in the top 10%, she actually needs to be down here. Um, because in this case, uh, top 10% of fitness means you have a low heart rate or a low increase in heart rate. So that needs to be 0 0.1. And we need to do an inverse normal to try and find out what that value is. The problem we're trying to solve is um, the probability that x is less than or equal to same as less than um, x1, we'll draw this for x1, is equal to 0 0.1. We're going to work backwards and find out what it is. So go to interactive distribution. Uh, this time it's inverse, and we want an inv norm CDF. Uh, we'll have left tail setting because it's to the left there. Uh, probability is 0 0.1, and it's uh, 9 and 40. If we then click OK, it'll tell us. 28.466 is what she means. So this is the um, maximum increase that Alex could have if she was to be considered in the top 10% for fitness. Now, this is an interesting question and this is really what we're leading towards. Another university study, so a completely different study now, has determined that the proportion of people classified as unfit is 50%, 15%, sorry, and the proportion classified as very fit, uh, less than 22, is 10%. So they've got different proportions find the mean and standard deviation um, for this university study. So we haven't got the mean, we haven't got the standard deviation, all we have are the proportions, and we've got to try and work backwards and figure it out. So the first thing to do uh, is to write down, this is a normal distribution, but we don't know what these values are yet. What we do know is that 15%, um, so greater than um, 50 here, is 15%, that's 0 0.15, and less than 22 is 10%, so 0 0.1. And we can use that information to try and work this out. But what we're going to have to do is convert this to a standard normal distribution. Now, if you remember 
a standard normal distribution has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. The proportions here are going to be the same. So if we were to work out what, um, how many standard deviations away, rather, um, this is on z, this is uh, z modeled by a normal distribution of 0 and 1 squared, um, then this value here, 50, would be the same number of standard deviations away from that value. And um, this one here, if we can work out this z value for 10%, well, whatever that value is, that's the number of standard deviations away that this is from the mean here. So we can combine that information to work out what the mean and standard deviation of our original normal distribution is. Because at the moment, we still don't know what the mean is here, and we still don't know what the standard deviation is. Okay, so two jobs we have first, uh, to work out our two z values here. Let's call them z1 and z2. So for z1, go to interactive, distribution, inverse, uh, inverse normal, and our teller setting is left, our probability is 10%, and uh, it defaults to the standard normal. So uh, it's minus 1.2816. So just to clarify, um, on a standard normal distribution, 10% of the data is to the left of the point at which you are 1.2816 standard deviations away from the mean or below the mean, which means that back up here, this 10% here in this value of 22, this 22 is 1.2816 standard deviations below that. We just have to work out what the standard deviation is. Our second z value can be calculated by working out an inverse normal distribution. This time we'll do a right tail setting and it's 0.15, 0 0.15. As again, um, it defaults to standard normal so we don't need to change anything there and it's 1.0364. So I've got my z1 value minus 1.2816 and my z2 value is 1.0364. Now, the relationship between this distribution and this distribution is that it's the same number of standard deviations apart that gives you that proportion of data. So uh, here we have, uh, we'll just look at the Z2 here and I'll call this one X2. Um, our Z value there is the number of standard deviations away and X2, which is 50, minus the mean, which we don't know, divided by the standard deviation tells us how many standard deviations away that is, which we know to be 1.0364. And we also know that x2 here is 50. So 50 minus mu over sigma equals 1.0364. That's our first equation. Now we can get a second equation using our information over here. Uh, our x1 value here, call that x1, x2, uh, 22 minus mu over sigma is the number of standard deviations away that this is, which we know is minus 1.2816. Now if you have two unknowns to find, but you have two separate pieces of information that you can create two equations with, it means you can solve them simultaneously and work out what mu and sigma are. Now I would suggest that you use your calculator um, using the simultaneous equation function to do that, otherwise you'll get a little bit messy. So in your main screen here, just bring the keyboard up and under Math 1 you'll find that. And we just need to put the first equation, the second equation and our two variables that we are trying to solve for them. So I've let x be mu, I've let y be sigma, I put my two equations in and I solve for x, y you can see we've got a mean of 37.48 and a standard deviation of 12.08 which tells us that in this university study um, their data is modeled by a normal distribution with a mean of 37.48 and a standard deviation of 12.08 now what we've shown you there is the uh, more complicated version of a question where you have to find both the mean and the standard deviation a simpler version of a question will only have one piece missing so it will give you the mean or it will give you the standard deviation and then it will just give you one piece of information. So all you need to do is set up one equation which you then solve for mu or sigma. This is the more complicated version where you have to solve them simultaneously. So if you're asked to find the mean or standard deviation uh, you'll have to use a standard normal distribution. First you find your z values then use the z equals x minus mu 
over sigma formula to find mu or sigma. And if you're asked to find both of them, you need to find two z values and then use simultaneous equations to find mu and sigma. That's it.